doesn't always look like that at all. Um, and as it is now, it's quite colourful, and that, that is the sort of paintwork that they would have had. And there is a debate still going within our academic team as to whether or not we should actually be painting the whole building. Some of our professors are quite convinced that this all ought to look like the stage to be carved and painted and decorated in a very Baroque manner. But we've run out of money. Um, we don't know exactly what scheme they did use, if at all. And we're very worried that modern people won't like it because this fits the Hollywood idea of the old world of Shakespeare, um, where everyone is short, dirty, covered in mud and lives in a wooden hovel. Um, their world was far, far more sophisticated than we tend to think. For good reason. Uh, in 1642, the Puritans take over England and they smash everything up that looks like this and people paint their houses white, which had previously been very gorgeously painted. Um, so we're left with a rather false impression of their taste. But that's how it might have been. But we're not trying to recreate the past here. We're, this is not a time tunnel by any means. And there is absolutely no way you will ever see a recreation of an early modern performance here. Except in academic conference. And even then we can't achieve it. Because if we were to put everything we understand about early modern practice into one production. It would be a curiosity. And that would be wrong. So it's just not possible to do. But we have looked at certain things. Um, we do look at sound. Um, this is one of the few theatres in the West End that does not use microphones to amplify the actors. There is a microphone up there, but it's purely so that the actors can hear backstage when they're in the modern dressing room. And for recording purposes, we record every performance here. So the actors have to rethink their craft of, of using their own voices within the building. But it's not that difficult here at all. It's relatively small, and the best thing of all, you can see everyone in the building, so you know how far your voice has to go. Um, <coughs> Lighting-wise, we don't change the lighting during the show. It stays like that for the whole thing. And that means it makes a lot more sense of the scenes which are set at night time, where the characters talk endlessly about it being night, because it was done in daylight. And here those words have a good reason for being there, whereas they quite often get cut by lighting designers and directors who say, well, we don't need those words. We can show them, but they're important here. With clothing, a lot of the time the actors will be either in modern dress or in theatrical costume, whereas something we can do here is to recreate early modern clothes accurately. And it's not something we do often now, because it's hugely expensive and the team who were really interested in creating that whole thing here they're no longer permanent with us but we did do a lot of experiments with accurately handmade early modern clothing and it's stunning to look at and for the actors it's great to wear because you're wearing truthful clothing and they're not costumes um, but there are lots and lots of different ways of doing shows but all of which are perfectly justified and we do use women here, although I just mentioned that um, we do sometimes look at the idea that there were no women. And it is interesting that every single female role Shakespeare ever crafted, he wrote for a man. And he knew full well while sitting at the desk writing it, it was going to be played by a man. And if you do Shakespeare without women, it is surprising how many lines you will hear for the first time in a way you've never heard them before. Um, I was watching David Tennant's Richard II the other day and there's a scene where one of the queens is banging on the door outside and they say, who is it? She says, I am a woman! <laughs> <laughs> it get, when you've got a man playing that yeah. role, it gets a laugh. And you don't expect laughs in these tragedies and these histories. And there's a lot more humour in the plays than, than you first think of. Um, obviously in nine of the plays there is the inherent joke that there's a man playing a woman who then disguises herself as a boy and she spends much of the play a woman dressed as a boy though we know she's a man clever clever joke and we have done a lot of that but we've also done women play men too and we've done five all-female productions just to prove a point uh, probably most successful being the taming of the shrew Taming the Shrew with Men is a horrible play. It's all about beating women up to make them subservient. Uh, take the men out of the play and it becomes a rage against how stupid men are. And it's a much better play as a result. We don't just do Shakespeare. He wrote 37 plays. But there are 400 plays of this time that we could look at. And that's just in English. Then there's vast numbers more in Spanish. 
and we are actually looking at one of the Spanish playwrights this year for the first time. We're looking at Calderon, no, Lope de Vega this year, uh, and that will be performed in Spanish. We also invite companies to perform Shakespeare in their own languages from all over the world. And during the Olympics year,